Welcome to my artist talk. My name is Christine Cole and I am excited to share with you my work, Untitled Still Life. This work takes the form of a multi-channel video installation, including four separate videos running on a continuous loop, deliberately situated in relation to one another. It is our hope that this work will eventually be installed at the Cornell Fine Arts Museum, but for now we are showing it through virtual exhibition. Throughout this talk, I will be taking you through the process in which I created the final installation work. This all started as I began to observe the community around me. Everyone I knew seemed to be moving from Orlando, moving back, or had the intentions of leaving soon. It was a transient place. I personally had moved back and forth between my parents' house and a dorm what seemed like every season for two years. I questioned what was home if everyone wanted to leave the place they called home, if I could find home in, say, a coffee shop, and if my dorm was technically my residence but going back home for the holidays meant staying in a familiar yet foreign place that I once lived. The term home seemed to have many meanings all at once, with varying places, people, and feelings associated. My junior year, I started, designed, and edited a collaborative zine in which people in my community could elaborate on a single aspect of what home meant to them, in order to get a better idea of what home meant to me. That same year, I took photo two. I never considered myself much of a photographer, but I was interested in the theoretical implications of photography itself. I learned that photography was inherently temporal, representing both the past as a memory and the present in experience. Photography could shape the perception of the viewer, connecting the past and present to create new sensations and ideas. It is a way to regain time, relive it, and see it in a new way again and again. These ideas would come to influence my work during my senior year. From my days of moving back and forth, I had learned to minimize my belongings. Things had become an enemy. They made me feel anxious and chaotic, out of control of my physical and mental spaces. It was a hostile relationship as things would accumulate, especially strange or ephemeral things such as leaking balloons, forgotten food waste, or piles of discarded clothes. My works in photo two were still life images which observed the material objects encroaching on my space, impeding on my time in this life. Coming into my senior year, I had learned that I had control. Things didn't control me. In fact, Things could be used as tools for me to gain control of my space day to day. They could mediate between my lived experience and my mind. I began to observe the rituals of the everyday, how I would arrange things over and over until I reached some form of perfection, got bored, and did it again. I realized that feelings of comfort and safety come from repetition. Repetition would vary toward a greater ideal. I observed the cyclical patterns of the accumulation of the same ephemeral objects I photographed the previous year, and the arrangement of these things amongst more meaningful objects, all with their own designated space. You can see this take place on the largest monitor installed on the table. Objects are placed haphazardly and intentionally. Actions happen both organically and contrived for show. Scenes layer and blur into other scenes, abstracting a notion of time and pointing to the ideas of repetition creating memory. Here, the use of lens-based video displays the essence of daily life. I record a multiplicity of durational experience as images overlap and fragment, not pointing to an individual event in time, but a feeling of what it is like to perceive various memories in a present moment. As I bring up the ideas of time, repetition, and memory, I also aim to ask the viewer to question the nature of representation. As I represent the everyday, what aspects of life am I trying to highlight and simulate? What is really everyday about the scenes you see on the screen? How does representation through video reproduction change the way that life is perceived? You can observe the smaller screen on the table to see a more linear passage of time without my hand intervening. This screen depicts incense burning on a loop, shrinking in size. This video evokes the transient nature of being symbolic in 17th century Dutch still life painting. The incense stands in for the burnt out candles in the historical Vani Tas paintings, signifying the fleeting of life, acting as a reminder of death, and the need to reject earthly possessions in the pursuit of salvation. I often light incense to begin the ritual of cleaning and organizing my space, so this element is also meant to ordain the habits illustrated as within a sacred kind of space and time. The screen hung on the wall does this even more so. With a sense of quiet and peace, this video is entrancing and makes the viewer feel as if peering into a familiar other world. The incense smoke reflected in the mirror further emphasizes the idea of repetition and re-presentation. Repetition is an idea theorized by French phenomenologist Guy Deleuze. In his work, Difference and Repetition, Deleuze describes repetition as conventionally associated with sameness or the identical. 
people tend to think that if something is to be repeated, there must not be variance or conceptual change. However, in my interpretation of Deleuze, I argue that within the present context, it is impossible for repetition to be the same as when repeated in a past context. Every repetition creates new difference, new ideas, new perspective. On the floor, you can observe a screen flickering between different clips. Each clip displays a cluttered scene filled with old dishes, packaging, or clothing. These are the less precious allegorical objects which really hint at the ideas found in my previous photography works. These are the lower, cheaper, ephemeral bits which are meant to come and go from your life quickly. These are the parts that you never intended to have, so you forget to discard just the same. These contrast objects like the bust on the table, which has a permanence to it, alluding to tradition and history, things that people hold on to to feel safe. We surround ourselves with our things ultimately so that we can feel safe, familiar, and comfortable within our spaces, so that we have a place that we can call home. We allow our habits to unfold, repeating and changing, creating a space which represents the evolution of our very being. When the world out there seems out of our control, we can use what we have with us to get a little closer to feeling in control. Especially in this strange time in our lives, with a virus which threatens our routines, our health, and our feelings of security, we find ourselves in our rooms, staring at our stuff, making do with the same things day after day. Perhaps we can find some comfort in that. This work represents a series of paradoxes. Control, chaos, repetition, difference, nature, artifice, transient, permanent, disposable, valuable, still, moving. It is my belief that life is an oscillation between these ideas, with no set rules as to how long it takes to go back and forth. Throughout this process, however, we all seek the balance and peace that truly is home.